And then as we progress our different pieces of content, you'll notice that they find themselves in different places. We have some in unassigned, some in drafting, ready to publish and posted. So we don't really know how well we're doing in terms of our campaigns. Are we a third of the way there, halfway there? Have we completed all of the underlying pieces of content? So let's go into this campaign progress. So here you see a number of fields that appear. We have the number of pieces that are associated to each campaign, the number of pieces of content that we've posted, what percentage of the campaign have we completed, and then based on that percentage, we have a progress. So if we've posted at least one piece of content, we're gonna say in progress. And if we haven't posted any, we say that it's not started. And what's great about this is that this is calculated automatically. So let's say I take one piece of content, this tweet, suit table lamp, that's from our content table. And let's just say it's been posted. Let's update that. You'll notice that that is automatically updating in the background. It goes from not started to in progress because we've posted we've one of the underlying pieces of content. So if you're on a project management use case, when it, let's say you wanna know how many of the underlying action items have you completed and based on how many you've done, you can go ahead and update a custom status on that number. So if I'm looking at my building campaigns, it's not necessarily clear at the campaign level how we're doing. So I know that all of these are in building because we haven't yet launched that product. However, have we created 50% of the, co the content, 75, zero? Where should I focus my time as a campaign manager? So there's a few elements we need to know what percentage of underlying content we finished. First, we need to know, well, how many content pieces are in each one of our campaigns? Second, how many of those pieces of content have we completed or posted? And third, well, what percentage of underlying content have we completed? And based off of that, we're gonna go ahead and output a unique status. So step-by-step step here. First, we need to know how many pieces of content are in each campaign. Now I can tell you that here it's two, I have two linked records. Here it's three, I have three linked records. So what we can see here, if we could count the number of linked records in each campaign, that tells us the number of pieces of content we need to create. So maybe you have a pro you're using a project management use case with action items as a linked record. Well, the number of linked records will tell you how many action items you have for that project. Maybe you have contacts with companies. So there you go, Joel's got it. So what we want to do here is count the number of linked records so we have that field in our table, in Airtable, to count the number of linked records, we use a count field. So I'm gonna call this number of pieces of content. I'm gonna go ahead and use a count field because remember to use a formula, you need to have each field you want to use in your formula in your table. So I'm gonna count. So tell me which linked record do we want to count? I'm gonna count the content. I'm gonna create that field and you see that it automatically counts the number of pieces of content associated to each campaign. So two, three, lots of content for this campaign, seven, and then three, four, uh, traverse coffee table. So next, well, we need to count the number of pieces of content that are in posted, right? So when they're done, they end up in this bucket right here. So similarly, we want to count the number of linked records, but that have that status is posted. So maybe for you, it's number of action items that are completed, number of contacts you've talked to. That's just one example. So I'm gonna use another count field. So I'm gonna say, posted pieces, I'm gonna use another count, I'm searching for it. I'm gonna go back to content, but if I create this field, it's just gonna give me what we just created a moment ago. I want a subset of linked records. So I can use what we call a conditional count field, right? So I'm just saying only include linked records 
that meet certain criteria. And in this case, we want that criteria. So only count linked record pieces of content where the status is posted. So it's gonna look through each one of those linked records and check whether or not it's been posted. And if I create that field, you'll see that it counts the number of posted pieces. So two, if we check, I'm gonna click on eCore chair, that's been posted, so that's one. And right here, that's been posted as well, so that's two. And this updates automatically. So let's say I go into XU table lamp. I take this one, let's say it's been posted. You'll notice that this updates to one from a zero. So now we have those two elements we need to get a sense of progress. So progress for us is posted pieces over the number of pieces. That's what we call progress. So now if I ask you in the chat, what are we gonna use for this? We have those two fields in our table. We have posted pieces, we have number of pieces. So we can divide one by the other to get our percentage progress. So I'm gonna call this percent progress. We're gonna use a formula field. Just like overhead, dividing one by the other. So here I'm gonna just say out and write out what, I'm, what I want. I want posted pieces. As I write that out, I can select it. There was a question around curly brackets. So I'm gonna answer that right away. Curly brackets is just saying, this is the name of the field. So if there's a space in your field, it's gonna put curly brackets. So it knows that everything between those curly brackets is the name of your field. I'm gonna divide that. Divide is a slash. If you're wondering, how do you know that it's a slash? In the formula field, you can get every mathematical operator. So numeric operators, it's plus minus multiplication and slash. So I'm gonna slash divide by number of pieces. And it's gonna put those curly brackets because we have spaces in the name of our field. In the formatting, I'm gonna go ahead and write percentage. I wanna keep the precision like that. And I'm gonna create that field. And that gives us our percent progress for each one of our campaigns. So now I'm gonna just update the status of one of our underlying pieces of content and see the ripple effect across all of these different uh, uh, fields. So let's say I take uh, that Facebook post, I'm gonna move it over to posted. That updates the number of posted pieces from one to two and two over three gives us 67%. Now, this is great, right? One thing I could do, I could maybe sort by the percent progress. So the, the kind of uh, campaigns that aren't performing as well would be at the top. Maybe I could filter so that campaigns that aren't doing as well as I'd like, I can filter those. But what I'd love is to create this kind of progress that says, okay, if it's at 0%, let's go ahead and output not started. We haven't written any of the pieces of content. If it's at 100, well, that's done, right? So let's just start with that first piece that says, if it's at zero, we're gonna say not started. And if it's greater than zero, if we've at least posted one piece of content, let's say that the, the, the campaign is in progress and we don't need to worry about it as much. So we are gonna have a custom output based on a field in our table. So I'm gonna use a formula field because we're looking at percent progress. So I'm gonna call this progress status. We're gonna use a formula field. And in this case, I know what the formula is, but if you weren't, you can always go to the formula field reference we're going to use an if statement. So let me know in the chat if you're familiar with ifs. Ifs let you take an input, check something about that input, and output a different value based on that initial input. So in this case, we're going to say, is the progress at zero? If the progress at zero, we know that we have not started. If it's greater than zero, then we know that we've started, and we're going to call that in progress. So maybe if you have a million dollar deal, you wanna say, is this 
uh, uh, is this deal over a million dollars? Great, we're gonna call that a big deal. If it's not, it's a small deal, right? So you can create, take these inputs and output a custom, whatever it is that you want. So in our case, we're gonna say percent progress. So take the value in percent progress, check whether it's equal to zero. So that is our logical. That is what we're kind of gonna test or check. If that's true, it's gonna output value one. In our case, we're gonna say not started. Right? If that's not true, we know that it's greater than zero. We've at least published one piece of content. We're gonna call that in progress. And that's it. So just reading that back, we're gonna say percent progress, is it at zero? Like it is right here. If that's true, write out not started. If that's false, we know that it's greater than zero. Say that it's in progress. I'm gonna go ahead and create that field. And there we go. So here, every time, this value percent progress is greater than zero. It's going to output in progress. Otherwise, if it's equal to zero, it's going to say not started. So I know that that was a little small. Let's go back to our little, little explainer here. This is what we ended up with. We said is percent complete, or I called it percent progress, equal to zero. If that's true, go to not started. If that's false, output in progress. So the theoretical here is that we have a function that is if, that's our function. Um, if we check a logical that says, okay, is, is this true or false? If this is true, I'll put value one. If this is false, I'll put value two. And that's how we end up with our formula. Our parameter or logical is, is percent complete equal to zero? If that's true, we know that it's not started, so I'll put that. If that's false, we know that it's greater than zero, I'll put in progress. Now, there's some great people in the chat foreshadowing where we're going, which is a great question that says, well, what if we want a third option? A good one would be, well, what if we're at 100%? We're not in progress, we're actually complete, right? So we want to say, okay, if we're at zero, we want to go to not start. If we're at 100, we know that we're done. If we're not at 100 and not at zero, well, that means we're in progress. So can we change the formula to account for this third option? And luckily the answer is yes, and we'll show you how. So let me go back into this formula. So let's walk through that. So here we're saying, is percent progress equal to zero? If that's true, go to not start. So that we want to keep. If we're at zero, we want to say not started. However, if that's false, if we are greater than zero, we want to do a second check. In this check, we want to say, well, are we at 100? So that's the second step here. So instead of just saying in progress, let's add another if here. I'm going to do a second check. So we know that we're not at zero, but we want to check is percent progress equal to one. That's 100%, that's equal to one. If that's true, we know that we're done. So we're gonna say complete. If that's false, so now we know if we're in here and this false, we're, it's, we're not at zero, we're not at 100, so we can say in progress. There we go. So let me save that. And now when we're at 100, it updates to complete. Now, I just want to show you this in practice, and we're going to go back to our little image so you really understand how I got there. But if I go to Xue Table Lamp, let me check which one of these is not yet posted. Moving it over to posted, this is going to be the third piece of content out of three. We see that's in progress here. I update that, it updates to complete because three out of three is 100%, and we know that that is complete. Now, just want to go over that, what we call a nested if, one more time. So this is where we ended up with. We said is percent progress or percent complete equal to zero. If that's true, go to not started. If we're in the false, we're not at zero, we do a second check that says, are we at 100? Are we at one? If that is true, it goes here to done. 
If that's false, it goes into in progress. Now, this might not be your exact use case. So just remember this, you do follow along with me. Is this true or false? If it's true, it's gonna go here to value one. If that's false, it's gonna do a second check. It's gonna go, well, is this true? If that's true, it goes to value one. And if that's false, it goes to value two. Now you can add nested ifs as many as you'd like. So you can do, well, I wanna do a fourth check or an eighth check. So you can keep nesting values as much as you'd like. And that's how you end up here. So our parameters checks whether it's complete. If that's true, we know that it's not started. If that's false, it does a second check to that value. And if that's true, if it's at 100%, it goes to done. Otherwise, it goes to in progress. Okay. And um, yeah, so one folks asked, well, what if we want to check something else in this parameter one, in this first logical? That's a great question. You might want to do an if on the budget. So maybe you want to say, is the budget greater than 50,000 or 100,000? That means that it's a very important campaign. You can do that. Maybe you have four or five budget fields that you need to sum before making that check. You can do that as well. You can say budget one plus budget two plus budget three. Check whether all of those are greater than a million. Assign it to an important example. So any logical works as long as there's it can be true or false. You can put it here in the first logical. So with that, now we can actually group by this progress status. So that's our last step here. So I'm going to group. I'm going to group by progress status. And now within a, my kind of building campaigns, I can collapse the building ones, the completed ones, and focus in on in progress or not started. And I can even hide kind of that uh, uh, posted pieces like this. And I can hone in on that custom status that is exactly the one I need for my workflow. 